Have you ever wondered what is the process of building a dashboard from scratch? Hey, welcome to the first episode of Build With Me. In this video, I'll be creating a dashboard for my Etsy shop to visualize traffic trends to my shop and understand shoppers' behavior when they visit my online store. Just a disclaimer, if you have watched my previous tutorials, this video is quite different from my usual ones because it's just to share my process of creating a dashboard from scratch. It's not meant to be a tutorial because this is my first time creating a web analytics dashboard. So I'm still in exploration stage. I just want to make it clear so you know what to expect in this video. Having said that, this video is going to be super long, so grab your favorite drinks and enjoy. First, we'll be using a free visualization tool called Data Studio to work on the dashboard. Before I start working on the dashboard, I went to Data Studio Templates Gallery to look for some templates because I'm not really familiar with Google Analytics. The sample dashboard can be a good guidance for people who are in beginner in a subject matter or in Data Studio. Here, I can learn what are some of the key metrics included by other report creators, what are the fields included in the data source, and also to get inspiration from the dashboard design. This also helps to expose myself to the terminology used in web analytics domain, such as session, page views, users, and so on. If there's any doubt, I always refer to Google Analytics Dimension and Metrics Explorer, which I find super useful and informative. With this tool, I can toggle to Universal Analytics or Google Analytics 4 based on my GA setting. In the search bar, I can key in the field name and look for the related metrics or dimensions. Say for example, when I search for the keyword user, it will return me all the available fields related to user that I can use in the dashboard. I can also click on the link beside if I wish to check the data definition. Next, I list down all the requirements for the dashboard. I try to think from the perspective of a shop owner. If I'm an Etsy seller today, when I open this dashboard, what are some of the insights that would enable me to make data-driven decision to be one step closer to my goal? Whether the goal is to convert more buyers or to increase the shopper's visits. For me, I just open a notepad and start writing down my requirements. So after deciding on the requirements, I use Canva, a free design tool to create a wireframe from a dashboard. A wireframe is a simple mockup that serves three simple purposes. First, it represents all the information that will display on the dashboard. Second, it provides an outline of structure and layout of the dashboard. And lastly, it conveys the overall look and feel of the UI design. If you want to try out Canva, you can use my affiliate link below for 30 days free pro account at no extra cost. I have chosen line charts for visualizing trends or time series data. I have also included an icon to show that this chart can be drew up and down to monthly daily or hourly view. Here, I use the bar charts to compare different categories. One of the example is to show the top traffic sources and medium, whereas table is good to display information at lower level, such as sales and conversion rate by listings. Next, I move on to data preparation. First, I make a copy of the template and connect to my GA account via data source connector. However, from GA, we don't have the revenue of our Etsy shop. So we have to maintain it manually in order to get the sales figures. 
With joining key identified and included in Google Sheets data sets, I can then join them with Google Analytics data in Data Studio using Data Blend. Next, I picked an aesthetic color theme and start adding in the colors using color hex code. I used a Chrome extension to help me jot down all the colors that I have picked in advance. This definitely makes the work of customizing team color more convenient. In the property panel layout tab, choose some default settings in Data Studio. For example, I can hide the header by choosing initially hidden, or you can also set the default border radius and background color of all the elements here. Now, we have finally reached my favorite part of the entire process, which is dashboard building. I like to start with the header and dashboard title and adding in a logo at the right. Then I start adding in scorecards according to what I have laid out in the wireframe. Sometimes it's okay to not follow the wireframe 100% because I think when we're building the dashboard, sometimes the creativity sparks and we thought of something else. So it's always good to explore and improve it along the way. For example, here initially I was planning to include a spark line to visualize the daily trend of users visiting my shop. But later on, I thought it would be good to see the trend for both users and sessions, for both returning users and new users. Other than this, I was still following my wireframe. By the way, I know that I used to do some quick tutorials video, but honestly, I don't feel like doing it recently. Reason being, it's quite dull to make that kind of video and I feel there are more to share in the process of dashboard building other than just the how-to videos so I don't want to let that feeling to stop me from sharing on YouTube so I came up with a fresher idea that I thought I would enjoy and I hope you can learn something through watching this but I kind of regret it later because the video editing process is like a disaster for me. Anyway, I enjoyed the process of building the wireframes and the dashboards. So I guess that's the trade-off that I had to make. Do you know that you can extend the frame size to show the entire values at the y-axis? Just now it was like... Mm, cut off or like squeeze at the side so now it looks much better just a side story i used to work with a director that is very attentive to details so we go all the way of like labeling all the values just to make it appear in full in one of the dashboard i remember that was in power bi by the way and don't get me wrong, I really like it when someone pays attention to my work and give genuine, genuine feedback. So I guess knowing these little tips can be useful if you are someone like me that also cares about the details and user friendliness in your dashboard building. So I actually struggling a bit here to find a nice color for this bar chart. And in the end, I decided to go with the orange color, the same as the header um, color temporarily. And we might come back to this later. And one more tip here is to adjust your canvas size to fit the dashboard so your report doesn't have that extra space at the bottom. I don't know why, but it doesn't let me type in the size that I wanted. So in the end, I just go with the triangle button there to adjust the size. I personally don't like to have that extra space because our users can actually scroll to the bottom and actually realize that there was nothing at the bottom. So this is not really a nice experience for me. So yeah. 
and next i'm adding a table for the listings i'm actually super obsessed with having some product photos in my dashboard so i actually exported this from itzy shop manager in order to have it here you actually need to change the data type from url to image in order to let it appear as an image like how it did now um, not sure if you still remember here i plan to show my total sales along with the listing views and also to calculate the conversion rate i decided to use the data from my finance tracker google sheets and another product list downloaded from itzy the latter is solely for the sake of the product image so to join both data sets first we're going to create two tables one for each data source then we can select both tables right click and hit blend data this is just another personal preference and it's lesser clicks to get to blend data page so here comes the more challenging part which is to blend google sheets data with google analytics in order to join we need to have a joining key so i have identified listing id as the key which can be extracted from page field it's actually a url link so here i try to use rebular to figure out the regular expression unfortunately it doesn't seem to be compatible with data studio formula again mr google is the best i found the answer from stick overflow now i'm adding in the expression and we're good to go when i try to add ga into the blended data earlier I'm not sure what's wrong with data studio that it kept having this missing data fill thing that I can't even cross them out so I try my luck by re renaming the column and I have no idea why it works but it works however I did a silly mistake here which I was using SKU as the listing ID so I guess bad field name was given and it even confused myself so now i need to go back to my google sheets and add a listing id there by vlookup to the easy list that i exported then i have to refresh the connection again and praying that it works but it doesn't it just keep throwing me weird error saying that my underlying data has been refreshed and i need to ask the data owner to refresh it i mean like i have already refreshed and reconnect the data source multiple times and it just don't let me pass through this error message so in the end i have to add another same data source again and it works i guess this is the reason why sometimes I saw people are complaining about data studio and the error message is just mm, dot 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 and one lesson learned here is also to give your column a good name see i confused myself with the listing ids that represent two different data and yeah finally we get through the hardest part so now I'm just adding some more scorecards and we are close to the end. Oh yeah, new finding here is that data blend doesn't support adding calculated field at the usual place. So you gotta add at the field there, which is kind of hidden. actually making some adjustment here and there on the layout so 
so this is the final output I don't know why but it looks different from my wireframe um, what do you think about this? in the end I just decided to go with this first I might come back another time to add more details after analyzing the data and start using the dashboard so I guess that's all for today do you wish to see more videos like this? let me know in the comment which part you enjoyed the most and why if you like this video please help me like and subscribe to my channel and leave your comments below i'll have more videos like this in the future so stay tuned bye bye